diagram now when we talk about a term drawing that means we have to draw some lines either a horizontal line or an inclined line or we have to draw a curve so what is basically a shear force and bending moment diagram so I'll first read out what is it so the diagram which shows the variations of shear force along the length of a beam it is called as a shear force diagram and similarly the diagram which shows the variation of bending moment along the length of a beam it is called as a bending moment diagram now when i have to draw a line when i have to draw a curve that is depending upon the type of a load that means if we have got a point load we have to draw a vertical line in a shear force if it is a uniformly distributed load we have to draw a inclined line in shear force diagram so uh, this is a table which represents that uh, what is the loading and depending upon that particular loading what diagram we have to draw right so we can see that the table has got type of loads then between point loads or uh, for no load region we if we have to draw a shear force diagram then it is a horizontal line if it is uniformly distributed load for a shear force we have to draw a inclined line and if it is a uniformly varying load we have to draw a 2 degree curve parabola in our gtu syllabus we don't have uniformly varying load for a shear force bending moment diagram similarly if we have got a uh, bending moment diagram to draw then again it is depending upon the type of loading if there is no load between two sections then we have to draw a inclined line if we have got a uniformly uh, uniformly distributed load then we have to draw a curve of 3 degree uh, of 2 degree that is a parabola and in a uniformly varying load we have to draw a parabola that is cubical parabola right and if we have got a couple that is in shear force we don't draw anything but in case of bending moment we have to draw a vertical line so these are the standards that we have got and which we have to use while we have to draw a shear force bending moment diagrams right now uh, today i am going to take one problem based on shear force and uh, bending moment diagrams a simply supported beam i am taking a cantilever beam now we can see that there are two types of loads acting on this particular beam one is suppose of intensity 2 kN and second is of intensity 8 kN acting over here okay and the distance is 1 meter and 1 meter right now for this particular thing if i want to sheet draw a shear force and a bending moment diagram so we have to follow different different steps right the very first step is we have to calculate the support reactions now to calculate the support reactions we have to apply the conditions of equilibrium so what are the conditions of equilibrium so the conditions of equilibrium are sigma h is equal to 0 sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma moment is equal to 0 now we can see over here that as we have got a fixed support over here for a fixed support we have got three types of reactions the first reaction is a vertical reaction so we can name it as vertical reaction v and as it is at point c so vertical reaction pc then we have got a horizontal reaction that is h c and a moment that is m c so we have got three reactions over here now we have to calculate this all three reactions so we have to apply our conditions of equilibrium the first condition is sigma h is equal to 0 so we can see that there is no horizontal force acting on this particular beam so we have got 
h c value is equal to 0. Second is sigma v is equal to 0, sigma v is nothing but the algebraic summation of all the vertical forces. So, if the force is acting in the downward direction negative, force is acting in the upward direction positive. So, minus 2 minus 8 plus v c is equal to 0. So, we get the value v c is equal to 10 kilo newtons. And the third condition is sigma moment is equal to 0 that is algebraic sum of the moment of all the forces that should be equal to 0. We are taking moment about a particular point suppose we take moment about point C. So, moment about point C. So, 2 into what is the perpendicular distance up to point C 1 plus 1 that is 2 and it is rotating in clockwise direction. So, it will be taken as positive. Second is 8, what is the perpendicular distance up to point C? 1 meter. So, 8 into 1, again it is in the clockwise direction positive and at point C, we have got couple moment m or we can call it as m of C and it is in anti clockwise direction. So, it will be minus that is equal to 0. So, moment about point C that is equal to 4 plus 8 that is equal to 12 kilo Newton meters. So, our first step is over that is we have calculated our support reactions. So, we can put our values over here we see that is equal to 12 kilo Newton, uh, we see that is equal to 10 kilo Newton and moment that is equal to 12 kilo Newton meters. Now, the second step is we have to calculate the value of shear force. So, step 2 will be shear force calculation, step 2 will be shear force calculation. Now, I will recall again whenever we are calculating the shear force, shear force is to be calculated at the sections and what are the sections? sections are those points at which the forces are acting. So, how many sections we have in this particular diagram? We have got three sections that is A, B and C. One more important point to be remembered is that whenever we have got a point load, we are going to calculate this shear force just on right and just on left of the point load. And the third important thing that you have to remember is that if the tendency of the force is to push the beam in the downward direction, then shear force is considered as positive. Okay? So, we start calculating now shear force, we can see that we have got all the point loads. So, I will take just on right and just on left of the point load. So, we start with shear force at point A as it is a point load just on right. So, we will draw one line just on right of A and we will put our hand and see on the right side. On the right side is there any force which will try to produce uh, bending? So, there is no. So, we can say that it is 0. Then shear force at point A just on right. So, on right side we will draw a line that is just on right side we will uh, draw a line and put our hand and see on right side of the section. On right side of the section how much force is there? Only 2 kilo Newton and what is its tendency? The tendency is to push the right side on the downward direction. So, shear force is taken as positive. So, plus 2 kilo Newton and we can say because RHS or right hand side is pushed downwards. Okay. Then we come to shear force at point B, again B is a point load. So, we have to take just on right and just on left. So, on right side of point B we have drawn a line and we will put our hand and see on the right side. On the right side how many forces are there? Only one and the right portion is pushed in the downward. So, it will be plus 2 kilo Newtons. Then we come to shear force at point B just left. So, on left of 
8 kilo Newton, we will draw one line and put our hand and see on the right side. How many forces are there? Now, on right side there are two forces, one is 2 kilo Newton and second is 8 kilo Newton. Both are trying to push the right portion in the downward direction. So, it will be plus 2 plus 8 that is equal to plus 10 kilo Newtons. Then shear force at point C just right because support reaction is also a point load. So, we will draw one line on the right side of C and C on the right side of the section. How many forces are there? 2. So, again we can say plus 10 kilo Newtons and shear force at point C just left. So, on left side if I draw one line as my section right and put my hand and see on the right side. How many forces are there? There are 3 forces. One is 2 kilo Newton and downward, 8 in the downward and third is the support reaction 10 in the upward. So, we can say plus 2 plus 8 minus 10 that is equal to 0 right. So, we have completed our calculation of shear force. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. So, our third step will be to draw a shear force diagram. To draw a shear force diagram, first of all we have to take all the points at which we have calculated shear force in the vertical downward direction. So, all these points we are taking in the vertical downward direction. Right? Now, after this we have to have one reference line. So, for that particular reference line it is called as a baseline what it is called as? It is called as a baseline that means here we will have a 0 value. All the positive values we have to draw above the baseline, negative values below the baseline. So, to start with we can see first what is our maximum value. So, the maximum value is 10 kilo Newton. So, we can take the scale as this is 5 kilo Newton and this is 10 kilo Newton. Now, to start with first is shear force at point A just right it is 0. So, at point A we have got the value 0. Then at point A again we have got plus 2. So, plus 2 we can plot it over here right. Now, what type of force is acting? Point load is acting. So, when point load is acting we have to draw a vertical line that means we have to join these two points. Okay. Then we come to point B. So, shear force at point B is positive 2. So, again we can show positive 2. Right? Now, what is acting between A and B? Between A and B there is no force acting. So, we have to join these two points. Then shear force at point B just left it is positive 10. So, at point B only I have to go upwards because it is positive and 10. Now, what is acting? Point load. So, when point load is acting, we have to draw a vertical line. So, we draw a vertical line. Then we come to shear force at point C, positive 10, no force is acting between B and C. So, horizontal line, shear force at point A just at point C just left 0, vertical load is acting. So, we have to draw a vertical line. Then we have to show the confinement of the area where shear force is dominant and as it is above the baseline it is positive. So, we have to show positive, we have to show our values. So, 2 kilo Newton, 10 kilo Newton and 10 kilo Newton and right over here shear force diagram. Right? Now, from this particular diagram I easily can find out that throughout my length of the beam where the maximum force is available. So, at that particular points I can give my stirrups. Shear force is basically important for calculating the uh, where the stirrups in the beams are to be provided. Right? So, uh, that is why we are interested in finding out the values of shear force at different different points. 
I hope this is clear how to calculate shear force, how to draw shear force diagram. That was our third step. Now, our fourth step will be bending moment calculation, right. Now, to calculate the bending moment, we have to again calculate the bending moment at different different sections, right. So, what are the different sections? So, now you all know what is a section. Section is a point where the forces are acting. So, step 3 will be bending moment calculation. I am writing for bending moment B m, right. So, bending moment calculations. So, to start with, first of all, we will take bending moment at point A, right. So, as I have already specified for bending moment, three things are important. I will repeat again. The first thing is when we are calculating bending moment, always we have to consider sections as those points where forces are acting, that is the first point. Second is, second is that you have to consider either right or left of the section, either right or left of the section. So, we are going to consider right side of the section. And the third thing is that if uh, there is no load between two points, so no load between two points that is A and B, then we have to draw a inclined line. If you have got a UDL, we have to draw a curve. So, these three points you have to remember. And the last important point is hogging or sagging. So, I will just again explain to you that if the force is acting in the vertical direction and if you are calculating moment at this particular point A, so it will try to rotate like this and lift the beam in the upward direction. So, this is nothing but hogging or in other words we can say convexity is formed above the baseline, right. So, this is hogging and if the force is acting in the downward in this particular way and if we want to take the moment at point A, so it will try to rotate like this and push the beam in the downward direction and this is called as sagging. Sagging is considered as positive and hogging is considered as negative. So, these sign conventions we are going to follow. When we are taking moment, we are considering clockwise and anticlockwise, but when we are talking about bending moment, we have to consider hogging and sagging. Okay? So, we start our calculation for bending moments at point A, B and C. So, to start with, 